All right, everyone, this is an 1111 problem video. So just quickly going through explaining some problems from 1111. So let's see, the first problem I see on 1111 uh, for the homework is we're told to find the Taylor polynomial T3 of x for f of x equal to cosine of x and centered at pi over 2. Okay. So the first thing we do is we do the same process as finding our Taylor series. Okay. So T3 of x, this is uh, the third degree Taylor polynomial. Uh, so what do we do? instead of we do the same thing as same process as finding our Taylor series, but instead of going to infinity, we go to three up top. Okay. And let's see, then everything else is the same. We have the derivatives here at a divided by n factorial x minus a to the power n. So basically all we need to do are find our derivatives of f and plug in a and those are our coefficients. Okay and then everything else is given to us by the formula. Okay so f0 would be the zero derivative meaning just the function itself. So f0 of a would be cosine of a. Well cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Okay f1 of a equals all right derivative of cosine that would be negative sine of a okay negative sine of pi over two that'd be negative one f squared or not f squared but second derivative okay Okay, so these are our coefficients. So we should just be able to plug these into our equation. So if I plug these into our, our formula and write out the terms, okay, so let's let's write these out kind of long, long form. So if I wrote these out, let's see, I'd have zero over zero factorial x minus pi over two to the zero. Okay, so this is all going to be zero plus, let's see, negative one over one factorial x minus pi over two to the power one plus zero plus one over three factorial x minus pi over 2 to the power 3. Okay, so that should be our Taylor polynomial. So really this simplifies as just as what? It just simplifies as negative x minus pi over 2 plus 1 over 3 factorial, which we could write as 1 over 6, x minus pi over 2 to the power 3. So that is all for that problem. Um, the other other problems, let's see, the other first several problems are similar. And then we get to we get to a problem where it asks us to approximate values using the Taylor polynomial. Okay. So one problem I'm seeing from that is. they give us this Taylor polynomial. And then they tell us to 
approximate cosine of 81 degrees to five decimal places. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, first thing I need to do is, let's see, this equation is, we got pi over twos in this, so this equation's in radians, right? So first thing we should do is try and convert um, cosine, uh, let's see, we should try and convert 81 degrees to radians. So let's see, how can we do that? We can figure that out real quick. Let's see, two pi equals 360, right? 360 degrees. So one degree equals pi over 180. So 81 degrees should be 81 over 180 pi okay now this is my measure in radians now to get my approximation i just plug this value into my taylor polynomial Okay, and uh, this is kind of ugly, obviously, which is why we're getting so many, you know, at least five decimal numbers uh, in, our, in our answer. But we can plug this, this is now in a form that we can plug into our calculator. And uh, really we could plug cosine, you know, we could plug uh, 81 degrees into our uh, calculator directly, but then the calculator would just plug 81 degrees into something similar to this, but maybe with more terms. Um, that's how calculators calculate uh, cosine of x. It's just using a Taylor polynomial. So we plug this into our calculator and we should get After rounding, we should get this. Um, one thing I see to make this a bit simpler is that uh, 81 over 180 equals 9 over 20. So we can simplify our fraction a little bit. And then pi, pi over 2 is what? 10 pi over 20. So that'll make this calculation a bit easier, okay? Um, but yeah, that's, that's the gist of that problem. Uh, the rest of the problems are about finding error bounds for our, uh, for our Taylor series, our Taylor polynomial. All right, everyone, this is an 1111 problem video. So just quickly going through explaining some problems from 1111. So let's see, the first problem I see on 1111 uh, for the homework is we're told to find the Taylor polynomial T3 of x for f of x equal to cosine of x and centered at pi over 2. Okay. So the first thing we do is we do the same process as finding our Taylor series. Okay. So T3 of x, this is uh, the third degree Taylor polynomial. Uh, so what do we do? instead of 
we do the same thing as same process as finding our Taylor series, but instead of going to infinity, we go to three up top. Okay. And let's see, then everything else is the same. We have the derivatives here at a divided by n factorial x minus a to the power n. So basically all we need to do are find our derivatives of f and plug in a, and those are our coefficients, okay? And then everything else is given to us by the formula. Okay, so f zero would be the zero derivative, meaning just the function itself. So f zero of a would be cosine of a. Well, cosine of pi over two is zero. Okay, f one of a equals all right derivative of cosine that would be negative sine of a. Okay, negative sine of pi over two that would be negative one. F squared or not f squared, but second derivative. Okay. Okay, so these are our coefficients. So we should just be able to plug these into our equation. So if I plug these into our, our formula and write out the terms, okay, so let's, let's write these out kind of long, long form. So if I wrote these out, let's see, I'd have zero over zero factorial x minus pi over two to the zero. Okay, so this is all gonna be zero plus, let's see, negative one over one factorial x minus pi over two to the power one plus zero plus one over three factorial x minus pi over two to the power three. Okay, so that should be our Taylor polynomial. So really this simplifies as just as what? It just simplifies as negative x minus pi over two plus one over three factorial, which we could write as one over six, x minus pi over two to the power three. So that is all for that problem. Um, the other other problems, let's see, the other first several problems are similar. And then we get to, we get to a problem where it asks us to approximate values using the Taylor polynomial, okay? So one problem I'm seeing from that is, they give us this Taylor polynomial. And then they tell us to approximate cosine of 81 degrees to five decimal places. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, first thing I need to do is, let's see, this equation is, we got pi over twos in this, so this equation's in radians, right? So first thing we should do is try and convert um, cosine, uh, let's see, we should try and convert 81 degrees to radians. So let's see, how can we do that? 
we can figure that out real quick. Let's see, two pi equals 360, right? 360 degrees. So, one degree equals pi over 180. So 81 degrees should be 81 over 180 pi, okay? Now, this is my measure in radians. Now to get my approximation, I just plug this value into my Taylor polynomial. Okay, and uh, this is kind of ugly, obviously, which is why we're getting so many, you know, at least five decimal numbers uh, in, our, in our answer. But we can plug this, this is now in a form that we can plug into our calculator. And uh, really we could plug cosine, you know, we could plug uh, 81 degrees into our uh, calculator directly, but then the calculator would just plug 81 degrees into something similar to this, but maybe with more terms. Um, that's how calculators calculate uh, cosine of x. It's just using a Taylor polynomial. So we plug this into our calculator and we should get After rounding, we should get this. Um, one thing I see to make this a bit simpler is that uh, 81 over 180 equals 9 over 20. So we can simplify our fraction a little bit. And then pi, pi over 2 is what? 10 pi over 20. So that'll make this calculation a bit easier, okay? Um, but yeah, that's, that's the gist of that problem. Uh, the rest of the problems are about finding error bounds for our, uh, for our Taylor series, our Taylor polynomial. All right, guys, let's try number eight on the homework. What I have in front of me is this, f of x equals ln one plus two x, a equals three, n equals three, and then x is between 3.5 and 2.5. And then part A of the problem says, approximate f by a Taylor polynomial with degree n at the number a. Okay, so basically what we have to do is find T3 of X, okay, third degree Taylor polynomial. Okay. So first thing I need to do is find my derivatives, All right? Anytime I find my Taylor series, Taylor polynomial, I need to start by finding derivatives. Zero derivative is just the function itself. First derivative, Okay, chain rule, I get one over one plus two x times two. And then I'm gonna rewrite this in this form to make it easier to find the next couple derivatives. Second derivative. Third derivative. I'm 
I'm going to leave these apart for now. And then F4, let's do a couple more derivatives just so we can make sure we can spot any pattern that pops up. Pull the negative out front. Okay, that should be enough. Now, let's, uh, we could try to find, find the pattern now in our derivatives or uh, plug in x equals, uh, a equals three and try and find, uh, try and find the pattern then. Um, let's see what this looks like. Uh, let's go ahead and plug in. Uh, our center. Okay, so remember our formula is f of n at a over n factorial x minus a to the power n. So I need to plug my a n to these derivatives. Okay, so let's see, I'll go ahead and plug those in. Okay, when I plug in three, I get ln of seven. Then I get two over seven. Let's see, then I get negative four over seven squared. Then I get eight times two over seven cubed, and then finally, negative 16 times six over seven to the fourth. Okay, so now let's try and spot a pattern in our derivatives. Well, ln of seven, that's not gonna fit with anything over here. This is a common thing where if, uh, I have a Taylor series and for ln, Usually what I'll do is I'll strip off the first term, this first entry, and write ln of seven plus the rest of the series starting at one. And instead of trying to write it as a whole, the whole thing as a series starting at zero, what I'll do is I'll strip off this first term and put it off to the side, and then everything else is gonna obey, obey the pattern. Okay, so what's the pattern on these terms here? Okay, let's see, and let's look at the numerators. I got two, I got four, and then, okay, that made me, makes me think this is powers of two. Okay, let's see if that continues. I got eight, okay, so I got two, that's two to the power one, two to the power two. Then I have two to the power three here, but then I have this other term, uh, two, okay. Then I have two to the power four times six. So what's going on? These numerators, yeah, they are going to be two to the power n, but then we're also multiplying by a factorial, right? This is six. I have six here, two here. I can think of this as one and one. So let's see, six is three factorial, two is two factorial, one factorial, zero factorial. So these numerators, are two to the n, I got power n here on all of these. And then I'm multiplying by n minus one factorial. And then what's on the bottom? Just seven to the n. And then the sign's changing, right? I got positive, negative, positive, negative. So I have an alternating sign here. And let's see, the first term, my, I want my series, this, the series for this term, these groups of terms to be starting at one. Okay, and let's see, my first entry from here is positive. So I want n plus one, or n minus one would also be acceptable, but I'll do n plus one. 
Okay. So uh, this is my, all of this is just my Fn of A part, right? Okay, so get a good look at that. And let's rewrite it down here. So it looks like my series, I got my Ln of seven term out front. I got my the rest of my series starting at one. And then I got two to the N, N minus one factorial. over 7n and then all that's over n factorial, right? All right, so it looks really ugly. Let's start simplifying. Okay, seven to the n, this, this fraction divided by n factorial, it's the same as this thing, right? Where we just have the denominator multiplied by n factorial. Okay. It's getting a little cluttered. Okay, now let's look at our simplified version and start simplifying here, okay. alternating term. I got two to the n, seven to the n. All right, so I can write that as two over seven to the n if that makes you more comfortable. I want everything to be nice and clear. All right, and then let's see what else I got. Uh, I got n minus one factorial over n factorial. How can I simplify that? That's just one over n, okay? And then last thing is my x minus three to the n. Okay, so a bit simpler, right? So let's consider this guy. Okay, I'm, I, I've written a Taylor series here, but all we need is the Taylor polynomial, right? So all we need is this thing cut off with uh, highest power of x being three. So let's see, let's write out, but now one, now that I have these terms, I, I can, you know, I, I know what my Taylor polynomial is gonna look like. All right, so the first term, let's see, I plug in one to my series here. And I get let's see, the first term would be positive. So I get two over seven to the one over uh, times one over one times x minus three to the one. Okay, that's my first term. Second term. Let's see, uh, now it's negative, right? It's n minus, or negative one to the power three. So that's a minus, let's see, two over seven to the power two over two. So I get this. And now we want a third degree polynomial, so I need to add one more term. Next term is gonna be positive. So I get two over seven to the power three, x minus three to the power three, all over three. Okay. So that should be my third degree Taylor polynomial. And this should be fine. It should be fine to enter like this in WebAssign. Uh, they might, and let's see, let me try and enter that. Pwn of seven, two over seven, x minus three, 
minus two over seven squared, x minus three over two, yeah, plus two over seven. Yeah, they accepted that. All right, so that should be fine. It, you, you don't even have to simplify these. You can just enter them as two powers of two over seven. So I entered it pretty much exactly like you see here on the screen, except it marked it as correct. Okay, so that's part A. Part B is maybe what more of you guys are having trouble with. How do we find the error? Okay, so let's look at this and try and find our error. So this is our T3 of X, our third degree Taylor polynomial. We wanna find the error associated with that. We won't be able to find the exact error, but we can find the uh, maximum error, maybe. Okay, and if we can, you know, we'll never know the exact error, because uh, otherwise it wouldn't really be an error. Uh, there's there's something unknown about error, right? We don't know exactly what's going wrong. But if we can find like a maximum limit for the error, then we have a good idea of how how good our approximation is. So we want to find our three of x, and if you watched the lecture video, you know that's going to be. Okay, so when I have a, a Taylor polynomial of the form from zero to K, when I have a Taylor polynomial of this form, then the error, the remainder, is gonna be uh, the K plus one derivative x minus a to the power of k plus one. And actually this derivative is the unknown part is that it's not at a, it's at some unknown number c. And then we have over k plus one factorial. Okay, so let's see, we have our Taylor polynomial is going up to k equals three. So our rk is gonna be f4 of some number c, fourth derivative of our function f at some number c, four factorial, x minus three factorial, right? X, excuse me, x minus three to the power four. So this is our r3, and we wanna find a bound for r3, all right? So this is not quite the answer. We wanna figure out all right, r3 of x is less than or equal to what? Okay, so that we're gonna, to find that we're gonna, we are gonna look at this, okay? So we can do this piece by piece, all right? So we wanna find, can we, can we bound this part and can we bound this part, all right? Um, let's kind of call this A and I'll call this B, all right? B is pretty easy, right? Uh, since, we'll do B first, since X is less than or equal to 3.5 and greater than or equal to 2.5, okay? X minus three to the power four, that's gonna be less than or equal to 3.5 minus three to the power four and greater than or equal to Two point five minus x to the four. Okay. In other words, that if I did the absolute value of x minus three to the power four, it's going to be less than or equal to point five to the power four. And let's write that as one half to the power four. So this this part. B is uh, less than or equal to one half to the power of four, okay? What about A? Can we find a bound for A? Okay, well, first of all, we need to know what this fourth derivative looks like. So let's go back um, kind of all the way to the beginning when we were looking at derivatives. Let's look at, this is the fourth derivative, right? And I'm gonna leave it in terms of X for now. I got negative 16 times X, 
times one plus two x to the negative four. Okay. And I'll go ahead and write the one plus two x to the negative four. I'll write that as one plus two x to the power of four and the denominator. Okay, so I want to I want to figure out a bound for this. What's what's the biggest this could be? Well, since I'm considering absolute values, I can you know get rid of any negatives. Okay, so I got sixteen times six, one plus two x to the power of four. And again, this is going to come from the fact that I'm dealing with this interval. Okay, so which one of these will make uh, this value biggest? Well, let's see, if I want this number to be really big, I need to make the denominator as small as possible, right? So let's see, this, this thing is gonna be less than or equal to 16 over, or 16 times six. Then I'm gonna plug 2.5 in to my denominator and I get, let's see, six to the power four. Okay, which is equal to 16 over six to the power of three. All right, now let's combine that. Let's put parts A and B together, all right? So we were saying R three of X equals F four of C over four factorial. Um, x minus three to the power four. All right. Let's see the numerator of this part. That's our part B. Okay, so that's so if I want to find a, a bound for this, that numerator is going to be less than or equal to six over sixteen cubed. Excuse me, sixteen over six cubed. Okay. And then I got four factorial on the bottom. That there's nothing, there's no inequality going along with that. It's just constant. And then uh, this this part is less than or equal to one half to the power of four, right? And now let's try and simplify. Well, first of all, that thing above is equal to. Let's see, sixteen is two to the power of four, right? Then I got over six cubed, four factorial, and then I have one over two to the four coming from here, okay? So let's see. This two to the four and this one over two to the four cancel, and I'm left with one over six cubed, four factorial. Okay, well, four factorial, that's 24. Six cubed is, let's see. Okay. So this is equal to one over 5,184. And then, uh, this is, I can plug this into my calculator and get a decimal number. And this is 0 0.00019290, blah, 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 blah. Rounding to six decimal numbers, I get 0 0.000193. So this would be my bound for my error. My error has to be my remainder has to be less than or equal to 0.000193. Okay, so I know that's really complicated. Hopefully that's enough to kind of guide you through uh, your own problems. And uh, that pretty much wraps up the new material and the new problems. So now it's all just time to review.